What's up everybody, 915 Mag here, hanging out with you guys today. Hope you guys have a good one. Thanks for swinging by. I'm gonna do a equipment update of my tank. Finally ended up getting another light. Um, I ended up getting some reef breeders. I currently had the uh, Photon version 2, 50 inch. What I did is I uh, slid it all the way down to the edge and then uh, kept the T5s where they're at. I really wasn't sure if it was gonna fit perfectly. Um, I did end up getting the Photon version 2 from Reef Breeders, and uh, this is the 24 inch model. This LED right here is considered a Valentine's gift from my wife. I did a complete unboxing of a the 50 inch, if you guys really wanna see that one. It shows you everything that it came with and the uh, performance of the light. So no more shading in my tank. This is gonna cover the whole tank. All of my tank is gonna be completely lit by LEDs. Of course, I'm using two T5s to supplement and uh, I'm just a big fan of T5s. I don't wanna do a whole tank of T5s even though that would probably be the uh, cheaper option, but uh, LED is just, it's here and it's not going away and uh, these are pretty good lights. The way that I attached it to my, uh, my tank is with this six foot uh, aqua illuminations rails that Tim gave me. I'm using it. Um, I zip tied it and uh, I also had my wife help me out. I zip tied the lights together because where they have a uh, option to do the uh, mount with the uh, brackets, I decided to use a uh, zip ties, zip tied it there. And as you can see, I zip tied it to the, uh, the uh, mount and it worked out great. The only problem that I ran into was the plug, but uh, I just moved it to the opposite end. I was trying to make everything all dress right dress, but um, this way worked out good. Uh, just snip the uh, zip ties and there you go, you're good to go. Um, one thing that I do want to say, I highly recommend that you cover your tank while you're doing any maintenance with LEDs because uh, although they're not very heavy, they do kind of weigh down and you just don't want your LEDs, your brand new expensive LEDs to uh, take a swim in your tank. I wasn't really sure how to program the additional light. Um, I was on the forums. I couldn't find anything. So uh, what I did is I used my original controller. I just went through the hours right there. And then I clicked down and I hit uh, save. And I, as I hit save, it, it inputted it into the second light, the uh, 24 inch. Now there is a slight uh, delay, about two second delay. I'll see the right hand side with my new light, go ahead and turn into the uh, next program. And then the light on the left, the 50 inch, will then turn into the new program. So as the lights ramp up or down during the schedule, um, the one on the right will go ahead and do it first. And then it's the 50 inch will go ahead and do it next. Um, what I did was I got a board and I screwed it into the stand. That way it holds these bricks up and they're off of the floor away from my sump uh, because I didn't want them to uh, get wet or anything like that. Um, this is the uh, tank right here with the both lights. And like I got to say is uh, it's a big difference. My whole light is tank is completely lit and it looks cool um, when the attendants are on. One thing that I'm going to do is change up my scape. Um, this skull that I have right here on in the front right. I glued a bunch of Zoas. I glued a whole bunch of different ones on there. And while I did that, I changed up the scape on the right hand side on accident. Well, one thing about aquascaping, if you think you have something right and then you just make a little minor change, you end up changing the whole thing uh, guaranteed. I just want to show you this uh, branch that I have right here. It's a Tonga branch. And what I did, started doing is sticking Zoas on there. And I'm going to just let them grow all out. Um, primarily, I put on uh, some Rastas and I put some, uh, I guess they're Fruit Loops on the bottom of them. And I put some uh, scrambled eggs on the top of this branch and I'm just hoping that they grow out. The uh, Rastas have actually started to grow uh, a little bit faster and it's just going to fill up this whole branch um, pretty soon. One thing is my leather. You can see my leather is uh, fragging itself. It's cutting itself into little pieces and I have all his little babies all over the place uh, and it's kind of ugly. Uh, 
I might just go ahead and cut it, but um, I wish it would just stop fragging itself because I have a ton of uh, leather frags all over the uh, tank now. I have some uh, GSP here, big chunks of GSP. Uh, this is a nice GSP on that Tonga branch that I had. That uh, I was watching a video of it where I actually zip tied some uh, GSP to that branch, and then I ended up super gluing it, and it's just taken off from there. It started off with a little tiny piece, and now I got big chunks of it all over the place. Um, also, it's starting to grow on my overflow. Um, you know, that's all right, that's cool. But uh, what I want to do is get some of this uh, Mystic Monopora that I have right there and glue it on the, glue it on the uh, left side overflow and just have it uh, take off and have a big old uh, Mystic Monopora, you know, right there on the overflow. Uh, I think that would be pretty sweet. Also, um, you know, I have some uh, Acros going okay. The one front and center on the left in the middle, um, I actually got that from D and it it kind of browned out on my tank, but uh, it'll color up. I had it off on the side, and uh, some of these little flower things all over the place. Uh, I ended up giving some away. Um, I had a few people stop by, pick up some frags, and I, I got rid of them. Um, I wanted to show you this rock that I got. I got this from uh, Paul, who gave it to D, and then they both gave it to me. So uh, I'm hoping for that to take off. I have two more of those rocks in my sump. And uh, I'm probably just going to pit those on in a, another project. But as you can see, I have frags all over the place. Uh, still still no sand, but you can see the coralline growing right there on the bottom. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of coralline. It, it, I, I know I was excited to get it when I first started my tank. But, uh, you know, most of the time I'll, I'll scrape it off. Now, if you want to get some coralline, just get a little rock. Uh, that has Coraline from another reefer. I know uh, Tim stopped by. He dropped off the 20 gallon and a uh, another thing which I'll, I'm kind of going to keep it secret. But he stopped by. I gave him a rock of uh, Coraline and if you didn't know you just scrape some of that off into your own tank and it'll kind of jump start it. Uh, another thing that will help with the Coraline is uh, calc washer. Um, that's all I'm dosing right now is calc washer and the auto top off along with the vinegar you know vinegar is the carbon source and uh, that's all I'm doing I have everything set up still for the two part the calc I mean the alkalinity you know the magnesium all that good stuff um, during the tank move my bird's nest took a little hit and uh, it's starting to turn back believe it or not you can't really tell because um, I'm filming this early in the morning uh, but uh, it is turning back um some of the gsp that i peeled off was up there with my duncans uh and the reason i peeled it off is because i wanted just to be uh concentrate on my uh duncans right there another thing i did finally get a new addition um what i did get is an orchid dotty back and believe it or not i got it at uh, petco um it was a cool little fish i went in there originally for just some uh, filter floss and I, I picked it up, and uh, the price of it wasn't too bad. And I know I'm going to catch hell for this, but I didn't quarantine the, the guy at all. I did try to put him in a, a quarantine tank, but I didn't have it set up. And so I just ended up throwing him in the tank. <laughs> I uh, When I did that, I know I was rolling the dice, but it's been a few weeks now, and uh, this little guy is okay. Um, looks real cool. At first, it just hung out in a corner, and what I started doing is I started feeding my fish heavy. I gave them, like, seaweed. You know, I started feeding multiple times a day just to keep their appetite up. But, uh, you know, I don't recommend that you do what I do um, because by no means did I do the right thing. Um, but uh, it has been a couple of weeks now, and all my fish are good. I've just been feeding them, and that's about it. It's a cool little guy. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't do what I do. Um, like and subscribe, and you guys take care. Have a good one, guys.